Okay, so in this lecture we're going to try to cover uh, curve fitting, uh, specifically linear regression. Now uh, curve fitting is basically the uh, art of fitting um, a polynomial or a line or uh, to, to data. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is going to be EMCH201 and this is going to be our curve fitting one lecture. We started this on Wednesday and we will uh, this will be a continuation of this for Friday's lecture. Okay, and then this topic is curve fitting and regression. Okay, and so curve fitting is really if uh, we have some data and say the data is kind of like this. The question is, what's what's the best way to fit this data? And there's different reasons why we'd want to fit the data. Um, an example that we talked about on Wednesday is, uh, say we uh, have a, a stage or something that we're trying to calibrate or some sensor and we can calibrate the sensor by say taking data and this might be um, some position this might be uh, a voltage and what we do is as we move in position we get a different voltage out of the sensor and so if we can create a curve then for any position uh, where we have or for any voltage where we um, don't have data we can find the data point by the curve so you know really what's the best uh, curve for this data would it be something like the straight line or would it be something like uh, a polynomial that might go through each data point or um, you know what is what is the best curve and so um, today we're going to talk about if we have noisy data um, we would want to do fit the fit the data with a regression line and this is a regression line. <clears throat> um, if we had precise data, for example, we knew that these values were exactly uh, where they needed to be and they, they actually were a real model, then this would be a polynomial fit and maybe that would be appropriate for the data. But um, for today we're going to talk about a regression line and when that's appropriate. Okay, two concepts that we'll talk about in uh, curve fitting and regression are regression, and the rest of the curve fitting will be called interpolation. Okay, and so today we're going to talk about regression. All right. <clears throat> So let's say we do have um, some data here. This is our y values, these are our x values. And uh, we have these different data points here. <clears throat> and we fit a line to these data points. Say this line right here. Well, for each x value on the line, there's going to be a corresponding y value. So if I have this as my x value, here's my y value from my estimate, we'll call this ye, and then I have this y value which is the actual y value from the data set. And so we'll call this value y. And as you can see here, there's this little gap, okay, and this is the error. And we can express this error as y minus uh, ye. And if our ye is our estimate, is a straight line in the form of a0 plus a1x, or, uh, you know, this is the same thing as y is equal to mx plus b, where this is your intercept, this is your slope. Okay, and so 
this is the same form as this equation here where this is our intercept this is our slope and so really we can express this error in terms of y minus y e or we can alternatively write this as y minus a naught minus a1 times x okay this this term here these are called the residuals or it's the residual error the residual error between the model our y e is equal to a naught plus a one x and the measured value okay and that measured value here is just y alright so this is the residual error so this is the expression of error and this is y minus y e okay and so the there's going to be an error e okay associated with each data point there's going to be an error for each data point you know so this might be e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 e6 etc so we can express all of the errors uh, as the total error of the residuals okay the total error of the residuals is just the sum of the errors okay and we can express that like this we're going to say the sum and when I say sum here I mean uh, we'll just say sum from i equals 1 to n and we'll abbreviate that here as just sum okay so we can say the sum of the error ei is just equal to the sum of the residuals which is the sum of y which is our measured value yi minus our model which is a naught minus a1 times xi and this is pretty much where we stopped um, um, on Wednesday but here this uh, um, n is basically just the number of data points it's the number of data points so if we want to know the total error then what we really can do is just sum up all the errors and so if I were to give you data <clears throat> If I were to give you x, x i, and y i data, <clears throat> you ought to be able to um, come up with his expression here. Okay, we have our y i, and if so, and if I gave you a naught and a one, so using uh, your x i, your a naught, and your a one, that would give you your y e, your estimated y, and then your e would just be y i minus y e. Okay, so this this is how we uh, build uh, the concepts of residual error using linear regression. And now uh, let's come on down here and talk about how we get those values for a naught and a one. So the question is, you know, how do we pick a naught? and a1 uh, such that we minimize the error e so um, and in order to do that um, we have to find out how we want to represent uh, or minimize the error now if we said well okay what about how about how about we just uh, you know we try a few things okay try one uh, just say uh, pick the smallest pick the smallest sum of EI that makes that seems like it would make sense uh, the only problem is is if we had some data 
and we had three data points and we had uh, a line that fit through them you know maybe this would be the one that would result in the minimum EI however if we just minimize EI this also is the same line that would minimize EI where this would be uh, say uh, a negative arrow here and uh, or a negative arrow over here and a, a positive arrow over here and a negative arrow, arrow over here it's possible that we could actually get in a situation where these would cancel them out so if we just try to, to pick the smallest sorry this should say smallest sum of errors it's possible that we won't get a unique solution okay so uh, this is not what we want to do we'll go ahead and make this uh, not the right thing that we want to do okay second thing we could do is we could say well let's try to pick uh, the smallest absolute value of EI okay what about that uh, <clears throat> well that also seems like it might work as well but if we were to look at the data it's possible that we could get you know say if we had this data point and this data point and then this data point and this data point it's possible that we could get uh, either this line or we could get this line and it would they would both minimize the absolute value of error because these would have the the same uh, the same amount of error in each case and in, in this case it's also not unique